or throwing Christmas lights on a dump site. That's just Jay getting ready in the morning. Or throwing Christmas lights on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> or throwing that ass in a circle. That's definitely a dump site. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, yes. <laughs> I don't know how many tick marks there are on there today, but. Welcome back. Hi. Hello. Welcome back to season two, episode two of the Beards and Sundries podcast. We're still here. I can't believe we've made it this far already. Just barely. (laughs) We're hanging on by a thread. (laughs) Oh, it's been a rough start to the year. That's right. We're still going strong, and it's time for another lunch break here at Beards and Sundries, the shop where three gay men with beards do inventory on a new sundry item in each episode. My name is Jay, and I just submitted my time off for Christmas week of 2023. And I'm Anthony, the 300 unread emails you've been dreading all winter break. Ugh, my inbox is so full. And I'm Joe, the mixed bell pepper slices that are fresh, crunchy, and perfect dipped in just a little Ken Steakhouse Ranch. And today's sundry item is back to work. Is that work with an E? That's right, Beardos. 2023 is in full swing. And today, we are going to explore life after the honeymoon period of the beginning of a new year. And yes, that is work with an E. Work, work, work. (laughs) Did you say twerk or work? Both. Oh, good. I can't do it. My ass is in a chair. I'll throw something (laughs) out, so. And it won't be a suggestion. (laughs) I'm officially going back to work for a company for the first time in a year and a half. And I am not excited about it. I mean, technically I'm a 1099 employee. So like, (laughs) (laughs) I went right back to the job that I've been at for nearly 12 years. Yep. The beginning of a new year. What do we like so far? What's planned next? And how are we are doing our best to keep the market up to its, well, not its full potential, but yeah, you know, aisle four. There will be more Boda on the shelf because I am cutting back just a smidge now that the holidays are over. There's going to be a Boda load of Boda. Oh, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joe, now that we're back to work, can you tell me where I can find some sundries in the office? In the office, check under that file cabinet. But if you're looking for sundries on our show, and if you're new to the show and you're wondering what the hell a sundry is, the term comes from an old English word meaning odds and ends. Now, nowadays, it's not really used for that purpose. It's used mainly in retail as a way to group together items that don't typically have a group of their own. So as three very capable gay men with beards, we are using the word to describe the wide range of topics that we cover. And Jay's having problems with his pussy. I've been scolding my pussy. (laughs) (laughs) Which one? Merlin. Oh, Merlin, you crazy. What are you doing? He keeps wanting to bother something. What's he getting at? Is there a cord or something? No, it's like my trash can in the office. And for some reason, he keeps wanting (gasps) to bother it. Did you finally shit yourself and he's trying to get after it? Nope. Oh, we'll update that later in the episode. Well, Joe, that was an incredible entry entry intro that was an incredible intro Ooh, i've had some incredible entries too jay joe god damn it <laughs> <laughs> new year new anthony he can't keep up with anybody there's so many fucking j names in my life now i got joe and jay and joel <sighs> jimothy well let's get right into it So, the holidays are officially over. That's our first topic today, gentlemen. Um, Uh, Let's let's get into it. You know, the holiday season has passed. Um, Are your holiday decorations still up? Because ours are. Ours are. Mine's (laughs) not, because I never put any up this year. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Wow. Scrooge. I know. The only thing I did was change my lights outdoors. 
Kids are still up and they're so pretty. I'm just tempted to not take them down because I like them so much. That was kind of my problem with my Christmas tree. Each year with my Christmas tree, I would keep it up just a little bit later each time because I'm like, but it looks so pretty and it makes the house feel so comfortable and warm. And then it's like mid-January and I'm like, you're starting to look like trash now. It's the outside lights that I haven't taken down yet, but that, they don't come on. They've been unplugged since January 2nd. Well, you're not doing too bad then. I mean, the Christmas tree is just in the corner of the living room that we don't look at often, so I just forget about it. So it's not really, like, bothering anyone, so just, you know. I also didn't realize how much that I put up my Christmas decorations for to kind of add a vibe to the house of the holidays for my old, uh, for my partner back then. And I didn't realize how much I did that for our relationship. Mm. And after it ended, I was gotcha. like, well, shit, this is just for me. And I don't really care. <laughs> that sounds sad. And I don't mean it is in it sad. I don't think it's sad. I wouldn't do it. Like I, I'm not home. I'm not home a lot of times during the holidays. So I like it. It makes the house feel inviting. I feel like comfortable. It's relaxing. It gets me into the spirit of the season. I love the looks of my Christmas tree when it's up. Absolutely love it. It's a nine foot white Christmas, well, white lit Christmas tree. And it's so pretty, but it's a lot of work. Well, I mean, the holidays are essentially kind of over January. Is there anything really of note? I mean, Martin Luther King Day. That's right. It's tomorrow, isn't it? Yes, it's tomorrow. It's January 16th. Happy early MLK Day. Yes. Happy one day early MLK Day. Since I work for a retail holiday. company, and it is one of the government holidays, um, we're still open as a retail company, but they let us have the option to um, put a paid holiday as like a vacation day of sorts. Mm. So we can pick a day two weeks before or two weeks after as a floating holiday. So that's, that's kind of nice. That's really nice. Um, I actually used one of the... I used my MLK day for our upcoming Florida trip instead of using one of my vacation days. So I'll get paid for it. It's important to note that the reason for the holiday is, of course, remembrance of Martin Luther King Jr. and his fights for civil rights. Um, And as three very white men, we could never understand that sort of plight. Um, But it's important for everyone to remember and all you listeners to remember that – not being racist isn't enough in a country where racism has been the standard for years and years. You have to be anti-racist. So just remember that when you're out and about and you're thinking about this holiday, it's a time to not just be not racist. You need to be anti-racist. You need to actively work against those things. If we're ever going to make any progress in this country. I think that's well said. Sorry to make it so serious, but it is serious. It is. Hey, it needed to be said. and I'm glad you said it. I mean, we while we laugh a lot, we still have serious moments. Think of our little PSAs we add. That's true. That's true. Like, we at least know how to recognize that. We have to use this platform for good every once in a while, at least. <laughs> Besides giving you trash 24-7, we have to give you a little bit of good. <laughs> we try to give you a lot of trash and just a little bit of, you know, actual factual good stuff. A sprinkle on some <laughs> actual quality. Yeah, exactly. From time to time. It's sort of like eating, you know, ramen with saffron. Or throwing Christmas lights on a dump site. That's just Jay getting ready in the morning. Or throwing Christmas lights on my ass. (laughs) (laughs) Or throwing that ass in a circle. That's definitely a dump site. Exactly. (laughs) I mean, yes. (laughs) I don't know how many tick marks there are on there today, but I guess I'll look in a mirror later. (laughs) I hate you. I know. But is the, is there anything else? It's definitely the most depressing month because you come out of this magic series of holidays. Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas. And then you go out with a bang with New Year's. And then all of a sudden it's like, there's nothing. You go back to work. You go back to standard routine. You take down all the pretty lights. And now it's just cold. I like cold, but uh, it's just this time of year. It's not even cold. Yeah, yeah. right now it's 71. Well, it was 71 today. It's so stupid. I hate it. I think on Thursday, though, it's I'm only sure in, in the 40s. You stupid bitch. Siri hates me. But I'm pretty sure on... Um... That makes two of us. <laughs> Siri, I didn't know you were a man. But uh, Thursday, I think we have a cold front come through. 
Uh, well, just in time for us to get out of town and go to sunny Florida. I hope a cold front hits. I hope it does, too. What's our next topic, Joe? I think he's looking at holidays. Let's look at today. January 15th is um, National Strawberry Ice Cream Day, um, National Bagel Day, uh, Fresh Squeezed Juice Day, Wikipedia Day. I love a good Wikipedia binge. I will go down a rabbit hole for hours. I mean, I would like a bagel with whitefish salad right now. Oh, here we go. It's National Rid the World of Fad Diets and Gimmicks Day. I can get on that a thousand percent. Okay. The diet world is so... It's insane. So many gimmicks yeah. that don't work and waste people's time and money and effort. But they don't waste my waste. Exactly. <laughs> oh, and then one more to wrap up this month. You can't forget the last Monday of January is recognized as National Bubble Wrap Appreciation Day. So head on down to the UPS store and grab you a sheet, y'all. <laughs> Just yank it and start running out. And they're like, hey, <laughs> hey you didn't pay for that. Jay always starts to yank it and then run out. All right, so. <laughs> but I'm also crying while I do that. Oh, you're like Dylan McDermott in American Horror Story where you're like jacking off and crying. Why don't I remember that? I feel like I'd remember that. It was season one. Yeah, he was in the second story window and he was like. <laughs> oh, yes. God, how many times I've been there. I was in pain and you buried your sorrow in some 21 year old's pussy. I was like, damn, Connie Britton. <laughs> I was like, Connie, is Dylan McDermott nice in person? Yeah. So there's some fun holidays for you to get through January. Yay. Okay. So our next topic up, we're going to talk a little bit about life at work. Work. So the three of us work in three different parameters of the working world in capitalism. I am in retail. I work for a big box retailer. Uh, I have done things with their fresh food department. I have been in food service and retail ever since I was 15 years old. So it's basically all I know. Um, you know, so it's been kind of kind of the foundation of my working skills has been in food service and retail. And I have done some leadership roles at the company. I have stepped back with some roles in the company. So I have kind of seen both sides of the business and how they operate. And I enjoy the company that I work for. And overall, at the end of the day, it's a great place for me to work. And I'm planning on staying there for quite a while. Um, so, Jay, you are one of those corporate worker drones, a worker bee. Talk about some office life. I work the corporate life. I work for a corporate energy company, actually. And um, it's uh, it's corporate life. If you have ever watched the movie um, Office Space, it's about how it feels. <laughs> Oh, man, that is a classic. Or if you ever watch the TV show The Office, you start to realize that it's it's a lot more similar than you think, especially the longer you do it. <laughs> I'm just picturing you with uh, like the character Angela, who has the cat in The Office when they're doing the fire drill. <laughs> and she just take take my cat and just throws it up in the ceiling with Oscar. And then it <laughs> And you think those scenarios are ridiculous, but the moment something serious happens, the panic sets in and people... There's got to be some truth where the source material came from. Do some weird things. And so, yeah, 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 it's that's right. Whenever I was living corporate, like, office life, I feel like I never had, like, a fire alert, like, a fire alarm go off while we were up there. So I never had to see anybody get in panic mode. Uh, I don't even remember doing tests, but then again, I was doing like account management. So I was always on the road, like going out and visiting clients and shit. Um, can you imagine me dealing with people? Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it. He puts on quite a show. It's intense. We had a fluorescent light actually short out once because I think they were replacing ballasts or something like that. And one shorted out and we actually did have a fire like spark on my floor, but they got it out very quick. But mm. I was definitely one of those people where I'm like, Oh, this isn't that serious. And I literally walked back to my desk and <laughs> grabbed my phone, which is completely against like protocol of any sort. Like you're supposed to evacuate immediately. And I was like, evacuate. I was like, everything. yeah, I was like, Oh, come on. This is nothing serious. I could see it. And the hand wave too. And everything. Oh, this is nothing. That's I precisely did. Granted, I was like sending everyone down. I'm like, go downstairs. Then I'm like going back to my desk, like checking offices. And then I'm like, here's my phone. 
And then I went back to my desk. I sat down. I was like, oh, thank God they're all fucking gone. <laughs> I light a cigarette. <laughs> you just. <laughs> Finally, ugh. <laughs> but I've been holding that one all morning. That one had a little poo. Where's my bingo card? Where's the bingo card? God damn it, the free space. Oh, no. The one thing I really don't miss about working in an office environment like that is waiting for the fucking coffee machine. Oh, my God. We had this incredible coffee machine. It would make lattes. It would make Americanos. It would make like espresso milk, oat milk, like sweetener, maybe some vanilla or chocolate syrup um, drink that you could want. You just enter it in and it makes it for you. It was really cool, but there was always a fucking line because there was one machine for a floor one machine. with like a hundred and some odd employees. So uh, on my floor, we had a special drip coffee machine, and you would pay $2 Ooh. a week to be a part of coffee club. And so you could have unlimited coffee. Is That's a pretty good price. Yeah, as long as you pay that yeah. weekly. And just recently, the machine broke, and we have to replace <gasps> it, and they keep pricing no. it. This is just like our team members that support it. It's not a company-sponsored thing. And so they're researching it to try and be reasonable, and I'm sitting there like, Bring back Coffee Club. I'm dying. Like, I have to bring my own. <laughs> gotta, gotta get a little hit. Get a little hit of the stuff, man. You gotta get a little bit. Which, the company provides coffee. And we have a coffee shop downstairs in our basement. And I won't use either of them. I'm just, like, sitting there angry for no reason. Yeah. There was a Starbucks downstairs at our office as well. And I never went to that because why would I? It's all the way down there. <laughs> well, at my store, in the break room... Someone returned a Keurig, and they said, oh, let's throw this in the break room for them. And they can bring their own coffee pods and have Keurig coffee. And we said, yay, thank you. Oh, like, it's a good story. I was waiting for it to break down. No, I just thought it was odd that, no, I'm not going to be a downer. No, it is nice that they put that in there for us. You got to bring your own. But I'm not a coffee drinker, so I have, like hot chocolate pods that I bring sometimes and I'd make the hot chocolate. I'm like, mmm, coffee. Mm. You know, those Keurig apple cider pods are pretty good too. I didn't know they made it apple cider. That sounds good. I guess it would make sense because it's a hot drink typically. Yeah. I, my company back when, back in the day, like we used to actually, they would provide the K cups for us for our coffee. Back when Jay was a kid. Back when I was young. But uh, they actually provided the K-Caps. Back when he was still JD. But <laughs> uh, when they provided the K-Caps, uh, they had all sorts of options like that. And that's how I discovered that they had the apple cider. But now you have to kind of bring your own. And I'm like, well, I don't want to bring a box up here. I just never been a K-Cup person. We had one of those at the uh, one of the locations that I ran here in Tulsa. And I... I hated it because I was just like, this is getting in the way of me drinking the amount of coffee that I want to drink. It is excessive because I have to make like three or four of these pods in a day. It's too little for me and too watered down. Right. Exactly. It's never like strong enough. I need my coffee to make me wired. Yeah. I, I got to get like, it's got to be like crack. Liquid cocaine. Yeah. 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 Um, heroin? It's heroin and upper. I think, uh, hmm. no, I thought it was a downer. Is it? Do, we, we don't really know much about drugs on the Beards and Sundries podcast. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a good drug user, so um, I'm just guessing here. Oh, I'm really great at using the drugs that my doctor prescribed me. I am okay at those. I'm on a good schedule right now, but I forget a lot sometimes. You forget a lot sometimes. <laughs> Who are you, Joe? <laughs> 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 That's enough talk about real work. Let's check in on these resolutions that we've set for ourselves. How's everything going? I, true to my intro today, I had some bell peppers and some cherry tomatoes with a little bit of ranch dressing with my lunch today. And it was, you know, they're very water dense. They're very calorically dense mm -hmm. vegetables. So it helped to fill me up with the Olive Garden leftovers I had as well. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> another step in the right direction i mean it wasn't like i had like a bowl of ice cream i had nice little crunchy vegetables well joel was offering to buy us olive garden what were we supposed to do say no to olive garden <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> God, I kind of want that that salad right now. <laughs> I got that salad. Oh, I love that salad. Mm, quick check in on my resolution also and the bingo card. Um, I'm not at 200 yet, but I'm still working on it. <laughs> my book isn't published yet, but I'm still working on it. I have had clean underwear for 10 days now, so... God damn it! That was supposed to be the free space! That's somehow now in my resolution. (laughs) (laughs) I hate that we've set this as the free space the year that you've decided to go more veggie heavy in your diet. (laughs) Like, God damn it, he's getting all that fiber. What a motherfucker. Well, Jay, one of yours was you wanted to read more books. Did you want a book suggestion? Because I have one. Ooh, I've got a book suggestion for you, too. Uh, Right now, well... I. I could tell you the one that I'm reading right now, and I already have February's picked out. Good Night Moon, classic. I love it. <laughs> no green eggs and ham. No <laughs> green eggs and ham. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Whoa, whoa, Anthony, slow it down. <laughs> I can't read that many words. By the end of the year, you're going to be reading Animorphs. <laughs> whoa, Goosebumps, Boxcar Children. Ooh, oh man, or Bernstein Bears. Oh, God, you just took me back years with Berenstain Bears. I used to love those. Oh, books. I I went nuts for those so much. I love those a lot. So what are you reading right now, Jay? So right now, my friend and I, we are um, what we do is we're picking a book right now each month. And we're reading a, uh, for January. We're reading a book called The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. Ooh, she's on a cruise ship. Oh, and she's in Cabin 10. What's that in steerage? Well, so no, it's a luxury cruise ship where you have only 10 cabins. So it's almost like a cruise yacht. Oh, that's stupid. (laughs) Shut up. God. Sorry, continue. But uh, yeah, so that's the book we're reading for the month of January. And we set goals each week that we have to achieve a certain portion of the book. And so... Currently, nice. we're a quarter of the way through, working on the the first half now. And um, I actually, based off of your discussion last week, I already picked our book for February, which is going to be that um, "Think Like a Monk" from Jay Shetty. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yep, you'll enjoy it. Yeah, I told her. I said I think that would be a really good book. Not to like outdo you, but I've already finished my first book, uh, 2023. Good for you. Working on the second one. Uh, I haven't had a lot of time. It's a book called In Five Years, and it was surprisingly good. My friend Kim recommended it to me, and it is about this woman who um, has seemingly has her life going in the direction that she wants for her. You know, you know when interviewers ask you where you want to be at in five years. She's got like her whole five year plan planned out. Everything is going in the right direction. And then her boyfriend proposes to her. And that same night, she goes to bed and then time travels into the future five years and has like a little glimpse of the future. And it's completely different than what she imagined it to be. And then she wakes up again and she's back where she was. And she has to like live with this little vision of the future for her whole next five years. And like four and a half years later, there was a guy that was in her vision that she slept with that was not her fiance. Slut. And he shows up via being her best friend's boyfriend. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. But it doesn't go in any direction that you expect it to. That's what I really liked about it was even the ending was not anything that I expected it to be. Um, the whole like purpose of the book the story itself was just ah it was good and it's a relatively short read it's like 280 pages oh i could fly through that really easy yeah it's a good book hmm interesting i'll text it to you i actually just i actually wrote it down i just wrote it down to remember april because we're picking one every other month so she picked january's i picked february's and then we're switching back and forth so thank you for that recommendation also If any of our listeners have recommendations, we're excited to hear them. Joe, what was your book recommendation? My recommendation for you, Jay, is actually be is actually the beginning of a five novel series. Um, It follows a it's by Dean Koontz, who's one of my favorite authors. I know that name. Yeah. And it follows the story of a woman named Jane Hawk. And she is. Oh, it's been a while since I've read it. But she is. I believe she's a former FBI 
ex CIA or FBI ex FBI agent, I believe. And she comes home one day and her husband has committed suicide and she can't, accept it because that wasn't who he was. And then she decides to dig into why he did what he did. And she uncovers this whole big crazy thing that spans five books. And it's just a crazy, it reads like an action film. Like I wouldn't be surprised if Netflix picks it up someday because it reads. So interestingly, Dean Koontz has done like all the research about like, he describes the vehicles that she uses. Like he describes Southern California so well in different parts of the country. And it's just, it's just really exciting. And it, it feels like you're watching an action movie as you're reading a book. What's it called? The first book is called silent corner. That sounds very interesting. He's a very descriptive author. Like, he is very big on, like, describing scenes, situations, laying out, like, what the room looks like. He is very good at painting a picture. So long as he doesn't have to write in children's voices, because he's really bad at that. Sorry, Dean. (laughs) I'm going to write a book to describe things, and I'll be like, he pulled out his safety device shaped like an L with a trigger. Or with a lever that you (laughs) pull that's supposed to (laughs) protect you. And Beardos, if you want to check out the Jane Hawk series for yourself, it's currently on Amazon for $32 in paperback for all five books at once. So if you want to get into a really good series and just kind of dive in and get lost in the world, it's pretty affordable for five books, in my opinion. I've also read that series, and it is really good. Joe and I disagree that the ending, I didn't like it, but he did. The great ending for what they had built up. Wasn't for me. The ending wasn't for me. The book series was for me. It was totally worth the read. Yeah, I definitely recommend, especially getting five books for $32. You can't beat it. Yeah. I've actually been trying to use Apple Books, the podcast, because I just read them on my iPad. Oh, that's stupid. And so that's been that's that's been kind of a new discovery for me because I was about to get a Kindle and then I was like, wait, 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 wait. I have an old Kindle laying around somewhere that I should charge up and see if it still has any juice in it, because that'd be a great way to carry my books on the go. It's in the closet in your office. I, th- I think you're right. I think it is right. I think I saw it the other day. It's Oh, don't dig. No, we're in the middle of a podcast. <laughs> Joe, come back. Come back. We lost Joe. Mute him. No, I'm kidding. No, I didn't find the Kindle fuckers. <laughs> he just falls out of his chair. It's in there somewhere. Uh, I forgot what all my resolutions were, but... Oh, well, you're doing great. I did, too. <laughs> I was like, okay, the book, the weight loss, which I'm kind of just plateauing at the moment, and it didn't help that Sunday I went and had pizza, because I was introducing someone to pizza at this specific place I like in OKC. But so, um, Oh, you were? Who was it? You were introducing someone to pizza? Just Who's the someone? Just, Who were you introducing someone just, to Was pizza? anyone special? Just someone? Mm-hmm. Just a person? Just... Mm-hmm. Just, a, yeah. just, a, just, just, just a, a person just a boy. I've been spending just a little a more time with. Yeah. From yeah. a small town world, living in a lonely world. Oh, wait. That was the girl. Just a small town Anyways. girl. <laughs> what kind of pizza? Detroit style from a place called Parlor here in downtown Oklahoma City. And it's, oh, yes. It's kind of like one of those places that's it's multi-level and it's got multiple bars and multiple little walk-up restaurants to it. So that pizza is good. Can confirm. Providence pizza, right? Correct. Yes. I think they're based out of Missouri, if I recall. Yeah, there's one at the uh, parlor in Kansas City as well. And there's a place there called Bad Nona's that makes um, all of their noodles from by hand. like Every day. Every day. And it's Yum. super fucking good. Yeah. So I introduced them to that. And it was delicious. Oh, that's fun. Good. Except now I'm bloated from it. And I got some of the only near authentic Nashville style chicken from the chicken place that was up there, but I can't remember the name of it. Gosh, what was that? Yeah, I can't remember. We have a Dave's Hot Chicken now in Nash or in downtown Bricktown. That's pretty good. I haven't been to Bricktown in forever. Nobody from the city actually usually goes there. Not since the accident. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> I filled out the free space and my pants. <laughs> so you've come back to work, work, right? And uh, it's time to start doing your job again. Uh, has there been a time for any of you guys where you've kind of forgotten your job duties or kind of what's expected? Because working in retail and food service, sometimes after a couple of days off or like a paid holiday off, sometimes I'll come back and I'm like, 
uh, where this? What, what are we doing? <laughs> Actually, I just had this conversation the other day about how every year I come back and I practically have forgotten my login because I'm normally taking 10 to 11 days off. Oh, uh, the logins and the passwords. Yes. And I have practically forgotten my password to my computer. And this year, my friend and I even like wrote it down and saved it. So that way we could just come back and remember. And for some reason this year, I don't think I separated enough from my life at work that I came back and I just logged right in and went on without issue. And I'm kind of disappointed in myself that I didn't separate enough. Yeah, I can see that. I would, it's always systems. You always get back and you're like, oh my God, I forgot my logins or my logins have expired while I was on leave or while I was on break. That's the worst one because like you're locked oh, out. Fuck. Now I got to go like I reset it. Yeah. And you, and the first day back from that like holiday break is always the worst because you're, you're getting there just on time. It's the first day I'm like, ah, I'm dragging ass already. And now I have to try to log in and like get ready. And now I can't log in. I'm locked out. I got to contact it and uh... <laughs> who is in the exact same boat. I am They're grouchy and in a bad mood and being inundated with everyone that's with having me. the exact same problem as you. So now they're just annoyed more because all of us are the problem. I haven't experienced it in retail. I'll have to log on to a cash register with my cashier number and then a password. And I've been helping out in the deli at work for the past holiday season. And I went to do one shift last week on the cash register and I logged into it and it said password expires in three days. And I was like, no, I have to change my password. And I was like, I'm not going to be on this register again for another two weeks. So I'm dreading going back because I'm going to have to change my password and go through the entire process and remember the new password. It's going to be a nightmare. I think the one thing that always got me, though, was getting back and trying to figure out where the fuck everything is. Because as an account manager, I'm constantly or I was constantly dealing with customer issues and orders and things like that. And so I'm I everything is a process. And then what happens over the course of like Christmas to New Year's is all of these people that I'm working with, since I deal with mostly small and medium businesses, I'm either working with IT departments or I'm working directly with like CEOs or CTOs or like just whoever happens to be in charge of this. And they've been on vacation for like two or three weeks. And we have to all figure out where the fuck we are at with all of our projects. And you have to like resynchronize and like catch up with these people. And they're trying to catch up on their real work. So the things that are important to me are not nearly as important to them unless it's like a hot button issue. So I'm constantly having to call and email and text and remind them like, hey, I'm still here. I still need this stuff from you. I know you're busy. I know I'm not on your radar, but if you want this to get done... I need this. <sighs> so like January was just a fucking slog. And it's also the worst sales month because you haven't built anything up. There's nothing good. You've basically drained your funnel at the end of the year. And then you have to like deal with January. Yeah, baby. Drain that funnel. You're nar now starting um, a new budget season. So everyone's like, <sighs> yep, it's the worst. And you can't drain that funnel if you got something big. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> well, is it time for a commercial? I think so. I think so. And now for a word from our sponsor, the Worker Bee Cubicle for Corporate Drones. This message is for anyone in a leadership position at work. Sometimes managing your team with just your eyes and a writing crop just isn't enough. Sometimes you need a more micro form of managing that'll get you hot. Try the Worker Bee Cubicle for Corporate Drones. Mm. It's the all-in-one cubicle setup so you can watch every second of your employee's day. From their synergized corporate KPI metrics Clear to what bowel movement they're about to have. Base plans come with 72 metrics measuring all 8 hours of the day, including 
mandatory overtime. Pay for the VIP plan and measure over a hundred metrics, including body temperature, to see just how much AC they cost the company. So, get the worker bee cubicle for corporate drones installed today. Micromanage the right way. You know, I just love the worker bee cubicle for corporate drones. It really helps increase my efficiency while causing my peers to be fired because I'm more efficient. The constant buzz just keeps me going the whole entire day. That's actually the screaming hot enema they put right up your butt. I like feeling like I'm being managed in um, kind of a micro sense where everything's yeah. being watched. Yeah, actually, it's fun because now instead of like 15 metrics, I've got 72, including how often I poop. And instead of one screen, I now have 15. And that's just 72 starter metrics. You can pay for additional. Yeah, you can get even more metrics. It's so much fun. You'll be firing frontline employees and hiring data analysts all day. I have to ask why it wasn't a 100. For the microist micromanaging. Now you can manage all of your employees constantly while doing absolutely no real work of your own. If only that were a real thing. Leadership is going to just really expand just to great wonders with this product. I think we should install one right here in the back, right here in the break room. Well, we're working on a limited budget at the Beards and Sundries market, so... Yeah. Yeah, it's retail, you know. We're just gonna have to keep using the loose oversight that is John Riley. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> loose is the key word. <laughs> ah. Oh my. Did you know he was wearing a wig the entire time? And it just flew off. He had just come off filming, um, uh, what's that movie that he started in? Powder. The craft. <laughs> Black Swan. <laughs> the Matilda musical that he loves so much. <laughs> <laughs> he told us it was the best thing he's ever watched. Absolutely. <laughs> he said way better than the original film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. He did say it. I had a text, but I accidentally deleted it. So um, getting back into it. <laughs> I actually have something for us to check out this time. So kind of fitting in with the book theme that Jay was doing, and also a fun movie adaptation. We're all familiar with books that are made into movies, movies that are made into books, and, you know, vice versa. Sometimes one's better than the other. I have one that I think both are good. And the visionary film that is 30 Days of Night that was made... From the graphic novel named 30 Days of Night that was turned into the film 30 Days of Night that was then adapted to the novel 30 Days of Night adapted from the film adapted from the graphic novel. You're welcome. So it's a um, property that I found called The Circle. And I was first introduced to this in 2017 with the film version of the book. Now, The Circle follows a young woman uh, and she lives in Southern California, and she is down on her luck. She's trying to make ends meet, take care of her parents, and she gets a job through a friend with a company called The Circle. And it has a lot of, it's a tech company, and it has a lot of influences that mirror companies sort of like Google, maybe Apple, where at, where there's a campus where all of the workers um in this world, they live there, they work there 24-7, and they strive to get 100-level um, ratings and reviews. And as they go, they're given more and more screens, more and more duties are tacked on. And um, this woman, as she goes on and tries to keep her work and life balance separate, she kind of sees them kind of merge into one slowly. And she's questioned as why why are you leaving the campus every weekend? And she says, well, I have to go home and take care of my family. And then so she starts to see this peer pressure kind of lifestyle to fit in at work and be the best she can be. And she actually does really well. And so she starts to get better and climb higher and climb higher. And you see the kind of like sinister um, 
implications of the company in itself. And you start to see her kind of question her own implications with it. And it turns into a really interesting kind of take on um, how technology is kind of taking over everything good and bad in the world. And the book and movie branch off and they have completely different endings. So I thought that I would like one more than the other. And I do a little bit. I kind of like the way that the book ends because it has a different ending than the movie in kind of like a sinister way, not to give anything away, but they're both really interesting to kind of sit down and check out. I really like the book. The movie was great, but the book is really good. I think it does a great job conveying the amount of work that May is saddled with and the amount of production she's expected to do. And then the other part of that is it's a great commentary on corporate family culture, like toxic corporate family culture. And it's funny because we're a family. No, we're not. (laughs) And it's funny because this was six years ago and watching it now, you would think that it was made yesterday. It is a great. So if you take the book or the movie at face value, it really does seem like it's about what the implications of no corporate oversight and in corporations being kind of allowed to occupy these public spaces uh, and monitor them and like in, in connecting them all via like social media. Uh, and that is definitely a big like point of the book. But then I think the thing that does get overlooked is that toxic corporate family culture that they keep bringing up with her, where she's like, I don't want to go to this like thing tonight, this little mixer that we're having on campus. So I'm just going to stay in my room or I'm going to go see my parents. And they ask her, well, it's not mandatory, but you know, we really encourage you to be there. Oh, this is Emma Watson and Tom Hanks. I would recommend watching the movie and then reading the book. Why have I not watched it? It's, there's actually quite a few people in it. Um, Tom Hanks, Emma Watson, Patton Oswalt's in it. Uh, John Boyega's in it also. And, oh gosh, who's um, Karen... Uh, what's her name, Anthony, from Doctor Who? Uh, Karen Gillum. Karen Gillum's in it, like, out of nowhere. And it's it's pretty star-studded, honestly. And it kind of flew under huh. the radar. and Which is disappointing, because I thought it was a really great movie. Yeah, I'll have to watch it. Also, it was um, her par- the parents, wasn't it both of their last roles, Anthony? Uh, yes, it was both of their last roles. I think they both passed away after that. And on kind of a somber note, um, Glenn Headley, who plays May's mother, and Bill Paxton, who plays her father, this was both of their last film roles before they sadly passed away. I forgot it was Bill fucking Paxton. Oh, my God. Yeah, from Twister. We got cows. Yes, I'm happy with, 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 with Melissa. I know her name. (laughs) Both properties are great. Both of them are great. The book is very entertaining and very interesting. And the movie is very entertaining as well. And it will make you question how much we value corporations like that. Mm, Or how much we just let them get away with whatever the fuck they want. (laughs) Anyways, is it time for a game? It is. Yes, that's enough work. I think it's time for a game. Time to play hard. Well, Jay, you've got a game for us today, don't you? I actually do. Do you guys want to play it? Yeah. What's this game called? What's our homebrewed game this week? I called it Sell Me You. And I am going to ask you interview questions because we are now back to work. And I want to make sure... That you are prepared for the job. Oh, no. Are you boys ready? I'm ready. Absolutely. You are not on a time limit, but try not to drag it on too long. All right. Um, And I'm going to switch back and forth. So one person has, has time to think and then blah, blah, blah. You'll figure it out. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> let's, let's start with you, Anthony. If your life became a Hollywood movie, who's the actor that would play you? And what genre of movie is it? Oh, absolutely easy it is a comedic dramedy (laughs) and i am played by none other than ron howard but he wears a baseball (laughs) hat the whole time (laughs) all right and he goes around and he sets out for all these high ambitions and he keeps failing in comically hilarious ways (laughs) 
Um, all right. That's a great answer. Joe? You're welcome. That's also directed by Ron Howard. <laughs> Do I have the same question? <laughs> yes, same question. Would you like me to repeat it? Okay. No, no, I'm good. Um, I would be in a small little independent film, little picture called Titanic, and I would be playing the role <laughs> of the door floating in the ocean at the end because I'm pretty strong individually and I could hold somebody up, but... When I have to hold up two other workers and have their workload saddled upon me, I'm just going to let one freeze up and kind of sink below. I wasn't aware that we were allowed to pick an existing film. Oh. <laughs> well. I mean. Listen. I know which one made him laugh more. I do know which one made him laugh more. I just think you cheated. But it's okay. <laughs> you're, you're trying to sell me you. There's no rules. But answering the question. I know. I'm there. That's fine. That's <laughs> interesting. Interesting. <laughs> oh, all right, guys. That was a wonderful round. All right. Um, Joe, your turn. If you were a deadly disease, which one are you? Oh, you know what? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be that disease in medieval times that made everyone dance until they died because <laughs> I am just so good at spreading happiness and joy and absolute <laughs> mania. And I can make people just kind of dance their cares away and spread joy <laughs> until they die on the clock. <laughs> All right. Anthony, same question. What was that disease called? No, don't look it up. If I can name it, can I negate his entire answer? <laughs> Sell me you. Okay, first of all, if I were a disease, I would know what my disease would be called. As with my opponent's answer, which was choreomania, literally choreomania, you dance until you die. Actually, it's called dancing mania. No, it's called choreomania. Look it up. It's the dancing plague of 1518. It's according bullshit. According to Wikipedia. That's a stupid answer. Wikipedia is wrong. It's called choreomania. Oh, yeah, Wikipedia is always wrong. Said every school teacher. It's... I was, I was like, technically, it's not a source I was able to use. <laughs> um, if I were a deadly disease, I would be esophagitis. Because I would cause your throat to get so swollen and clogged that you couldn't breathe anymore. <laughs> and you die of oxygen, <laughs> oxygen starvation. It's my penis. That's, that's, it's a metaphor. Well, your penis is a sexual disease, so it makes sense. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> Anthony, your turn. If you died working here at the Beards and Sundries Market, what epitaph should we put on your gravestone? He was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe. Hey, Aaron Choi. Joe would never <laughs> spill a pot of macaroni and cheese on the ground, bitch. Wow. R.I.P. That's a long epitaph. I paid extra for every letter. <laughs> Clearly so. Not sponsored by the Beards and Sundries Market. <laughs> Since B.S. Buxy's collected over his entire working life. Joe's got this, like, nice marble headstone, and mine's just, like, a fucking two pieces of, like, wood from one of the, uh, the pallets in the back. It's just, like, taped together because they couldn't afford nails. <laughs> Hey, you know, that's good, though, Anthony, because they can never burn it because it's um, uh, uh, dangerous because it's chemically treated wood. We don't exactly follow the rules around here, Joe. What? Um, all right, Joe, sell me on why I should choose Coke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, can... Can you tell me if it's the Coke that we stock in the beverage section or the Coke that we get from uh, the hourlies out back? Which one should I buy? Which one would you buy, Joe? Sell me you. <laughs> All right. Well, I would buy the Coke Zero, <laughs> but not from the Beards and Sundries Market. I only get my Coke Zero at the movie theater because Coke Zero from the movie theater fountain hits different. It is so fresh and so clean, just like me, you know. Just a little different and quirky. You kind of got to go to a destination to get me. So, but the Coke that I would not buy is the Coke that I would steal 
from Brandy with an eye who's been on register five all morning with that kind of tweaker look in her eye. She's out back. She's been out there for a minute talking to a boyfriend and the Jeep, talking to her boyfriend and that rusted out Jeep Wrangler. So I'm going to go show her what's what. End of my answer. Thank you. So you told me what Coke you would buy and what Coke you wouldn't buy. <laughs> Right, I gave you options, and it's Brandy Thank with an you. I, and she dots it with a heart because she's gross. <laughs> Does she have all her teeth? No, because of the Coke. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Anthony, your turn. Well, two selling points here. One, I'm going to give you some solid advice. Uh, but two, also, I'm not going to take a half an hour to answer the question. Um, <laughs> Jay, he said, uh, go ahead. Jay, you a little tired right now? It's, you know, it's in the evening. It's supposed to be bedtime. <laughs> I am tired, Anthony. Coke. <laughs> okay. There you go. Couldn't have said it better myself, even though I did. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Coke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have three more. Are you guys ready? Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Anthony, your question. If someone wrote a biography of you... What would the title be that best describes you? Um, 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 <laughs> three truck stops outside of Amarillo, Texas. <laughs> Fun fact, that's the Caucasian pronunciation of the word yellow in Spanish. <laughs> I am so sorry. I can love this game. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, uh, your question. She ate. <laughs> Is it just your story about mac and cheese? All right. Second to last question. Joe, you're first. How would you explain herpes to a five-year-old? <laughs> so, my sweet summer child... <laughs> these are really painful sores that will erupt on your body and because you're a child it'll hurt even more and because you're a really bad child and everyone else <laughs> thinks so too you're not going to get any christmas presents ever again <laughs> because you're a child wow and i don't like you good luck <laughs> next anthony your question I don't know. That was actually a pretty good. One. <laughs> it's the energy is there. I don't think I can match that. Um, yeah, it was a great job. Yeah, seriously. I spoke from the heart. Do you want to forfeit? Actually, no. I'm not going to forfeit. You know how I would explain. He'd never forfeit. You know, <laughs> you know how I would explain herpes to a five year old, Jay. Yeah, go for it. Go ask your uncle Joe. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Sit on down, Timmy. Oh, good Lord. All right. <laughs> Final question. Anthony. <clears throat> sing a song that best describes you. <laughs> I have to sing? Oh, this wasn't part of the deal. <laughs> God damn it. Um. <laughs> you could pick just a, a section of a song <laughs> that describes you. It's me. Hi. I'm the problem. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Joe? <clears throat> if it had been for Cotton Eye Joe, I'd be married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? He came to town like a midwinter storm. He rode through the field so handsome and strong. His hands were his tools and his smile was his gun. But all he had come for was having some fun. If it hadn't oh. been for Cotton Eye Joe, I'd be married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? I didn't know it had a Ooh. verse like that. I had no idea wow. that that was even a thing. The girl sings that part. I don't know if maybe I'm being biased, but I really loved that game. And you guys were tied right up until the song. 
Oh, and Joe yay. is winning this game. I fucking knew it. I knew it. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Let's go, Joe. Cheater. Joe, uh, just so you know, you won the question about... Uh, Nobody writes songs about Cotton Eye Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, sorry, just, Santa. <laughs> There's there like 300 Jesus songs and only four fucking Santa ones. Four fucking Santa ones. <laughs> Joe, you won the question about your life being a Hollywood movie. And if yes. you died working here, your epitaph. Uh, you also he won, won explaining herpes Bullshit. to a five-year-old for sure. And, of course, your song. Yep. Oh, I laughed. Yeah. I loved it. Yours was too much of an afterthought for me. <laughs> Bitch. Ugh. But, Anthony, you wrote the biography, or you won the biography, and you sold me on Coke. <laughs> it's an easy sell. When you, when you love the product, you're not selling anything. Great job, Joe. I'm proud of that game. God, I didn't realize how crazy, weird job interview questions had gotten. It's wild. <laughs> you really got to explain well, you yourself know. now. At my company, <laughs> they use kind of the same questions over and over again because it's just like internal. But man, those are really creative questions. Well, here, here at the Beards and Sundries Market, we expect the unexpected. Exactly. Now that I didn't land that horrible promotion, I hear the music coming back on. Oh, it sucks for you. Tough break. Um, I better finish up my Coke to get back on the floor. Ooh, <laughs> that Coke Zero. Absolutely no cocaine. Yeah, definitely the Coke Zero. <laughs> once again, guys, it has been another great lunch break. We are so happy you joined us once again. And, you know, you got to keep getting on that email address beardsandsundries at gmail.com tell us what you like tell us what you don't like give us game ideas we love hearing from you it really brightens up our day also check out our new hotline that you can call and leave a voicemail on and we would love to put it in the episode it's 405 999 2242 405 999 2242 leave us your 205 999 Two two for you. Leave us a sexy voicemail, and we might include it in the episode. Or a funny one, or just any voicemail. Please leave us a voicemail. We just want to hear from you. Yeah, say just say hi. Say say you like listening to us. Say anything. We want to put it in there. Say anything that we can put on air. <laughs> we really want to put it in there. I just want to stick it in there. Also, make sure to rate and review us on whatever platform you're listening on. Uh, five stars. Share us with a friend. Please leave a review so that we can get in front of more people. If you enjoy the podcast and you listen in weekly, that's how you can help us. Uh, or follow us on our socials on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Message us there. We're very responsive. And by we, I mean Jay. I will respond. Well, Beardos, thank you again for joining us this week, and we hope that you have a wonderful day and a wonderful rest of your week, and we hope to see you again next Sunday. And we love you so much, and don't forget to love yourself. Bye, Beardos. Bye. Bye. Bye.